like to get started with this organizational um, introduction and overview. Um, the Open ACC organization is the organization hosting this Open Accelerated Computing uh, Symposium. This organization um, is dedicated to helping the researcher and the developer community advance science by expanding their accelerated and parallel computing skills. We've got three areas of focus that we'll um, mention here today. Um, the broader ecosystem development, training and education, and maintenance and advancement of the open ACC specification. Um, this slide um, includes the um, icons of um, most of our member organizations. We are a member organization. Um, the organization consists of institutions of uh, higher education, uh, national laboratories, the computing industry, and also um, uh, members of heavy industry and the energy industries. Um, and um, we're celebrating our 12th year of existence. Um, OpenACC um, was founded in the fall 12 years ago. Um, we, uh, our governance model is uh, focused on a board of directors, and these individuals are our current serving board of directors. Um, they serve on three-year staggered terms. Uh, Duncan Poole, Thomas Schultes, Dan Jacobson, Guido Yukaland, uh, Sunita Chandrasekharan, and David Lincomber are currently our uh, board of directors serving our community. We have uh, corporate officers. Barbara and I serve in this capacity um, as uh, vice president and president, respectively. But I'd also like to highlight the service of Daniel Howard from the National Center for Atmospheric Research, who serves as our secretary, Azumi Barker, who serves as our director of public relations. Azumi is um, coming from NVIDIA, and Yulia Levides, who's currently serving as our treasurer. The work occurs in um, a set of committees, and we have uh, committee leadership. Um, in particular, Jeff Larkin and Joel Denny, uh, Jeff from NVIDIA and Joel from Oak Ridge serve the technical, com tech, technical committee. Um, Izumi Barker uh, leads our um, marketing committee, and Sunita Chandrasekharan is our user group chair. Um, an additional word about our three pillars of focus. Um, starting from the uh, right, um, the technical committee is the longest uh, um, existing committee that develops and stewards our open ACC specification by introducing new features and functionality. Um, there's opportunities for service there from the broader community if you're interested. We also have a very effective program in training and education boot camps and hackathons, training materials available for download, and programs for educators, students, and mentors. Um, in particular, there's opportunity to be developed as a mentor if someone would like to also serve in that very important role. And for the ecosystem development pillar, here we're trying to be plugged into the broader community, especially um, other standards committees so that we have relationships there and we can share best practices um, and learnings to facilitate the integration of programming models more broadly um, in scientific computing. Um, Barbara, I invite you to jump in here and um, move forward um, with um, a chunk of the remaining uh, presentation. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Jack. Yes, yeah, so um, Today, we, we know that a large fraction of the compute power available to for research and development uh, is, is to be found in accelerators. And uh, so we truly believe that uh, we need this broad approach um, involving uh, not, say, just in quote marks, the, the specification, but also significant efforts and training and, and in ensuring that we're part of this broader environment uh, is really essential if we're going to uh, enable application developers to exploit these platforms uh, with the greatest of ease uh, and, and, of course, uh, very effectively and efficiently, not just today, but, but also tomorrow. Uh, Kevin, the next slide, please. 
Okay, so there are, of course, never too many compilers. Uh, just and um, I'm very good to see that support for OpenACC is steadily growing. Um, wanted to just make a few comments here. There are um, both vendor and open source compilers, and there are also a variety of research efforts um, re related to compiling. Of course, research um, can help explore new features or potential new features and, and their implementation. Um, and uh, to, if you want to find out more about those, you could check out our website or, or talk to or join uh, even better the, the user group. With the, the uh, vendor compilers, um, Cray was one of the founding members of the uh, open original Open ACC consortium, and uh, they were acquired by Hewlett Packard Enterprise or HPE. Um, I guess it's uh, about four years ago now, something like that. And um, the uh, the Cray programming environment has been continuing to develop their compilers at that time, and they picked up from the support for OpenACC version 2.0 then, and are working hard towards uh, uh, OpenMP 3.2 at this point, and will be 3.3 for as well. Um, that compiler supports a, quite a broad variety of CPUs, so Intel, uh, AMD, and ARM. Uh, 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 CPUs, but also uh, AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, and uh, that work is, is in progress as we uh, work towards the, the next generation of GPUs as well, so uh, very active development. Um, we prioritize features since since it is a rich uh, there's a rich set of features in OpenACC. We prioritize them based on our customer requirements or customer needs, uh, and, um, and also uh, prioritize some, some key applications. NVIDIA su provides support for all three of the base languages, C, C++, and Fortran, and their uh, software development kit for HPC. And uh, they uh, also, uh, so they support 2.7 uh, of the standard and are also working towards the latest, uh, latest standard. And um, and also prioritizing uh, key applications in terms of the uh, the feature, the ordering in which the features are implemented. Obviously, not not this the scope ultimately, but uh, but we have we're tr trying to maximize uh, both companies trying to maximize their contributions. Um, the uh, open source and of course wildly popular GNU compiler set um, supports Open ACC on both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs and. Uh, this one other thing just wanted to point out briefly, uh, because the LLVM compiler infrastructure is increasingly popular as a means to not only introduce new languages to the field, but also to uh, provide open source implementations for the community, one very, very active community efforts in, in this area. Uh, and so it's very good to, to uh, share that um, there are open ACC compiler development efforts in this uh, and with related to uh, LLVM as well. First of those being CLAC, which is uh, C, C++ effort, so extending CLANG. Uh, FLANG is, is uh, support for Fortran, which was not traditionally uh, supported in the in by LLVM. Uh, and so that's starting from a, uh, from a, you know, sort of a, uh, at an earlier position, but uh, it's being very actively and very intensively worked on right now. So both general uh, Fortran support and, uh, and open ACC. So many, um, many implementations out there are uh, all un, uh, under active development and uh, are there any, any compiler geeks there? So I, I love compilers. It's not a criticism. Um, I think uh, some of those open source efforts in particular will be well worth your, your time exploring and uh, perhaps perhaps even being uh, getting engaged. Next slide, please. So, uh, uh, got it. All right. Yeah. So everything started with a specification, right? So version uh, 1.0 came out in, um, in 2011, and now we're at 3.3. Uh, and uh, well, for many of us, uh, our, our interaction with that is, is to read it and try to use it and, and, and talk about our experiences. Um, it is possible to get very much more engaged uh, and with, uh, with, with the, uh, the specification itself. So OpenACC, I'd say, is relatively mature at this time. It has, has many, uh, many good features, but uh, workloads are evolving. So use cases are evolving. Hardware is evolving. So there is always a need to review and potentially revise and, and enhance the, the specification itself. It's a sort of a never-ending a never uh, effort. And um, 
Many of our members already are very actively involved in that process, and um, we'd like to invite others who perhaps have a stronger interest in the specification, maybe in, in a very specific portion of it, or or generally to to consider getting involved. So it's um, uh, uh, if if you are a member side, it's actually pretty easy to do that, as you can see here, um, and. Uh, if uh, of course if if you're not already at a member site then perhaps you can can be the be the agent of change there um so being involved in the spec at the high level uh, of course involves um you know being part of the user group sharing your experiences uh, for example also via presentations such as the ones at, at this event um more a more focused activity is is actually real really fun. You obviously get to know the specification in a whole different way if you start uh, discussing the features, how we should how, how we can best provide them. That needs a user and application developer viewpoint just as much as it needs a compiler one. So again, uh, if you're interested in doing that, there's um, you know very welcome to to start joining those calls. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Okay, so I just uh, want to make a comment here because uh, training um, is something that never stops, right? There are many, uh, many new, new students, new generations uh, who are beginning to learn about parallel programming in general and, uh, and accelerator programming specifically. Uh, even the experts uh, uh, need to learn about the uh, vague or the uh, specific specific uh, issues with new new platforms uh, dealing with with new kinds of coding problems. And um, I, I've been privileged to attend a couple of hackathons that I thought were quite incredible. Um, so uh, I, I was extremely impressed by the rapidity with which people made real significant progress, both in their own knowledge and sometimes in, in their the uh, applications that they've been working on. Uh, incredibly valuable experience. And uh, I think some, you know, the sort of the, the energy, the expertise, the enthusiasm, and, and those are something you have to, I think, experience. Um, so this is a, a great, great program. Back. Uh, so over to, to you, Jack. Great, thank you, Barbara. Indeed, um, this idea of um, hackathons as um, team of teams learning opportunities where um, developer teams bring their code and are paired with a mentor or two, maybe two mentors and resources to work on their code in an intensive way, clear their calendar, and um, under um, expert coaching, make significant progress toward the, towards their development goals and accelerated computing. It's truly proved to be a big idea. Um, we have now averaging about 25 events per year or one about every two weeks somewhere around the world. Um, and I expect that many of you participating in this, uh, in this call today um, are familiar with this from direct experience. Um, more recently, we started a boot camp to, um, as a shorter format, more structured uh, curricula to try to get teams ready to participate in hackathons. And this has also grown um, very much. At this point, we're limited by um, uh, um, mentors, and it's hard to imagine how we would do more of these events, but we're always looking for opportunities to increase their quality and increase their impact. A, a, little, bit, a little bit more um, information here about our evolution of the hackathons, just to say that the AI, um, as well as HPC focused teams are participating um, in our hackathons at about the one third to two thirds uh, ratio uh, respectively. And of course, we want to embrace these expanding universe of accelerated computing applications. Um, we also want to um, expand the opportunity of the, the community that uh, the community of mentors working um, in this way. And again, we have uh, development opportunities for mentors, essentially a research software um, engineering expertise where people can add these skills to, um, to their portfolio um, and begin to contribute in ways that, that maybe they hadn't in the past. So please contact us if you're interested in these, um, these opportunities.